Hello everyone. Welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. I am Ruth Norton with Ruth Stamping Corner and today we are making a gorgeous ink blended background card. Um, I am using the Above It All bundle. This is in our mini catalog. This is a really unique one. We've never had a bundle quite like this with a little um, sky tram or um, you know, ski lift kind of thing, and I thought it was so cute. It's so cool, and so we're gonna use this one. This is actually um, was one of the very first things that I ordered. I really like the set. So before we get into our card, we are in the final final days of September. September thirtieth, the last day of September is this Saturday. So lots of things are wrapping up this month. Um, the Home for the Holidays Paper Pumpkin Kit, this is actually October's Paper Pumpkin Kit, and you actually have until October 10th to subscribe to this one, um, but don't wait, do it, do it early, do it while you're thinking about it, and that way you don't have to worry about it. This one is going to be really fun, it's going to coordinate with the November kit as well, so if you get October's kit, make sure you subscribe to November's kit as well, because those will actually coordinate. This one's going to be eight cards for each of two designs. We're going to get a bunch of cards in this one. There's going to be a whole bottle of glitter glue, a real red stamp spot, of course, a stamp set that goes with that, and all the envelopes and everything. So this paper pumpkin kit is going to be very cute. So make sure that you subscribe by October 10th for that one. We do still have some of our special release DSPs in my online store. So if you haven't had a chance to snag any of those, make sure you grab them. There are some gorgeous DSPs. Now, World Card Making Day is coming up on October 7th. So um, make sure that you are aware of that. October 7th is going to be a fun Saturday. So it's not this Saturday, but it's a week from Saturday. Um, but Stampin' Up! has released a brand new bundle. Can you see that one? Heartfelt Hexagons. They've released a brand new bundle in honor of this. And they are doing a free virtual event for World Card Making Day. So you can head to my online store. Um, the banner along the top will kind of rotates and when it gets to the world card making day one you can click on that for all the details and to um, re register for that world card making day virtual event it's just going to be a fun virtual event that Stampin' Up! is doing making cards if you don't have this bundle they also recommend a couple of other bundles but of course you can use whatever you have you definitely do not have to make a purchase to participate in this and it's a completely free event all right, my card crate for October. That's, this is my class to go. This is going to feature the Sending Cheer Bundle. This one is so cute. The little gingerbread man is adorable. I have some really fun cards featured in the card crate this month. This one is going to be a stamp stack. You're actually going to make nine cards. You're going to make three each of three different designs. You're going to get $20 in product. Um, you can add on the bundle if you need to. It is uh, $40 shipped. If you need to add on the bundle, I think the bundle is 53. You can add that on. Um, all the details are linked in the video description. You can head to my blog for all the details on Card Crate. The last day to RSVP for Card Crate is October 13th. I believe that's the day. Um, but all the details are linked in the video description. It's going to be an amazing class. Also included, you are going to get a free tutorial for a tag box and all the tags that go in the box. So that's going to be a free bonus tutorial that you're going to get in the um, PDF and video instructions included in that card crate. So this month, I'm really jamming in everything that I can for, for card crate. It's going to be amazing. Um, this is my host code for September. So this one will end on Saturday, September 30th. I'll have a brand new host code on Sunday, October 1st. And um, we're going to talk more about October 1st in just a second. But if you are shopping my online store, um, head to uh, my online store. Use this host code when you shop. If your order is under 150 use the host code. If it's over 150, don't use the host code because you're going to earn Stampin' Rewards. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order is over $50, you also receive the make and take kit that coordinates with that. Um, this is the card we're making today. If you missed the very beginning, I shared this. We are using the Above It All bundle. Now, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we have the Sandia Tram here. And so when I saw this stamp set in the mini catalog. That is exactly what I thought of. I thought, I have to get that. We have the tram here. It's going to appeal to a lot of my local people. And um, and I really, really like this bundle. I've played with it a lot. And I have some samples of some other projects at the end that I'm going to share with you. So this is the card we're going to make today. And we're actually going to start with the background, the ink blending part, because that is going to take the longest for our card. So that's what we're going to start with. So I have a piece of basic white that is three and three fourths by five. And I'm gonna get out some scratch paper and we're gonna do some ink blending. 
All right, now I have a bunch of ink pads and blending brushes off to the side, so I'll mention the colors that I'm gonna use as we go through this. Um, and then if you have any questions on ink blending, just go ahead and leave them in the comments. I am not sure that Facebook is going to cooperate and show me comments today, but if you leave me comments, I will um, make sure to check after the video. All right, so I am starting with Daffodil Delight, and I have a blending brush. Now, I have blending brushes dedicated for, like, all my yellows, all my purples, all my pinks, etc., etc. So um, I don't have one dedicated for each color, but for all my yellows, I use the same one. And for all, all that. Now these little um, markers that I have on my blending brushes, I get asked about these every time I use my blending brushes in a video. I got these on Etsy. I think the shop that I got them on actually has closed or they're not making new products anymore. Um, but if you just search blending brush like markers or blending brush tags, um, these little things, lots of different people make them. So go to Etsy and check that out. So I'm going to start with Daffodil Delight and I'm not too worried about getting the very, very bottom of this because that's going to be covered up with a mountain but I want to really saturate kind of the bottom quarter of this with ink. Now the key to ink blending that I have found is the more ink that's on the cardstock the better things will blend with it. So when you do ink blending just be prepared you're going to get an arm workout this is going to this is not going to be a quick card you really need to layer on that ink I also find that um, ink or blending brushes that have been inked up or that have ink kind of already in them that are well used, those tend to blend a little better too. Um, so I don't I don't wash my blending brushes. So I only use this one for my yellows, and when I'm done with a specific color, I'll just kind of run it off on my scrap paper, and I can use it in a different yellow. It's not going to interfere with that. Okay. We're gonna set our Daffodil Delight to the side and I'm gonna bring in Melon Mambo for our next color. I'm not gonna close up my Daffodil Delight just yet because we may be coming back to it just to, to blend a little bit more together. Okay, so now we're going to go in with our Melon Mambo. Now when you ink blend, always start on the scrap paper first. That way all your harsh lines end up on the scrap paper and not on your project. If you do get some on your project though, just keep going over it and they will blend. So where the Melon Mambo and the Daffodil Delight meet, we're gonna get a nice little orange shade. And I really want some bright pink in our sunset. So I'm gonna keep adding lots of color, lots of Melon Mambo to the, to the top of this. Where it's kind of already blended into orange right here, I'm not gonna go over that too much because I don't wanna lose that orange color we're going to hit that again with some Daffodil Delight to really kind of blend it up together. Blend it out. So I'll bring my Daffodil Delight back in and go over that again. And that's just going to soften that, that Melon Mambo a little bit more. It's going to give us that more orangey hue. So you guys see how that's coming out so far? It is beautiful. And you can see the more colors, the more ink that gets layered on your cardstock, the easier it's getting to blend. So um, just keep that in mind. Now obviously if you just want something lightly blended, if you just want a little shadow or something in the back, you can't keep adding color because that's going to just make it darker if that's not the look you're going for. Okay, I think Melon Mambo is good. We're going to set that one aside and I'm going to bring in a gorgeous grape. And we're going to open that one up. Goodness, I don't know why that was so hard. All right. So I'm going to flip this over, um, ink that up really well, and we are going to kind of come in from the top, go over some of the Melon Mambo. You want those colors to, to kind of blend together. When you ink blend as well, you're never going to get the same look twice. It's, it's just not going to happen. So if you're making a bunch of ink blended background cards or ink blended cards, um, just be aware that there, no two are going to look the same. And that's kind of the magic of ink blending. You don't really want them to look the same. Um, but they are just, each one is going to be its own little work of art. So lots of gorgeous grape. And I'm going kind of down far into that Melon Mambo to give it... Um, lots of shading into the Melon Mambo. All right, I think we're good. I'm going to come back with just a little bit of Melon Mambo and just kind of soften that edge where they, they met up. All right, move that one aside. 
And our last color that we're going to use is Starry Sky. You can also use Night of Navy. I kind of like the purple tone in Starry Sky, so that's why we're using Starry Sky. And this one's going to go just right along the top. And you're not going to see this one too much. I went much darker with my purple on here than I did on here. You can see this one's definitely more Starry Sky. This one's definitely going to be more purple. But um, both are going to look great. Just a little bit of Starry Sky. And then I'm also going to just bring in a little bit of Starry Sky just along the sides here. Now you don't want to go too much over the yellow because that's going to make green. But just a little bit just to kind of give that hue of, you know, a darky, darkening sky coming in. Okay, I think that's good. So I am going to close up all these ink pads. And we are actually done with all of these ink pads. So I'm going to be popping them back in their slot as we put them away, as I close them up. And Daffodil Delight is our last one. All right, now we're going to do one more thing to this background. Let me move all my brushes out of the way. We, I'm going to add some little stars to it. You see all that sparkle and shine? So I am actually going to use my Wink of Stella and a block. This is just one of our smaller blocks. I think this one is C. And um, I'm going to press on the barrel. It says push on the side. So I'm going to just um, squeeze a little bit of Wink of Stella out onto my block. Not a whole lot, just a little kind of droplet of it. And I'm going to use my brush and hold my block at a little bit of an angle. And we're just going to splatter the background. Now the closer you get, the bigger drops you're going to get. And just a tiny bit more. Um, the farther away you get, the smaller droplets will fall. And I'm just going to do this all over the background. So you can see this one, I had some really big droplets, which is fine. This one, we have a much smaller droplets. And as that dries, it's just going to be sparkly, and it's going to give us just a beautiful sky. So um, I'm just going to wipe that off. I'm going to clean that off in the sink when we're done. And we are going to set this beautiful ink blended background aside. Now, I definitely went a lot darker on this one than I did on this one, but they're both going to look amazing. So, but this one's definitely a lot lighter than this one. But again, both are going to look amazing. All right, where am I going to set this? Hold on. <laughs> All right, there we go. Set that right off to the side. Okay, let's work on our stamped pieces for this now. So we have our little tram piece that we're going to stamp. So let's go over the rest of the pieces for our card. So for our card base, I have a piece of gorgeous grape, eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored it in half at four and a quarter. Give that a little burnish. I have a piece of Starry Sky, which is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And we're going to mount our ink blended piece right on top of this. So I'm just going to set these two pieces aside. We don't need these anymore. And we have a piece of white that we're going to do our stamping on and pool party, which we're going to talk about this one in a minute. And I have already used the dies to die cut a few little elements we have out of Pretty Peacock. I've already die cut the little mechanism that's going to run along that track. And then I have a couple of mountains and we're going to die we're going to stamp on one of these. So, let's pull out these these are out of crumb cake. So, I'm going to stamp on the smaller one cuz the smaller one will layer onto the bigger one like that. So, I'm going to stamp my greeting on the smaller one. Let me grab my stamp and pierce mat. This is a photopolymer stamp set, so Make sure you grab your stamp and pierce mat for easier um, stamping. The photopolymer kind of needs that extra cushion. So just right along the bottom, I'm going to put Let's Adventure Together. And this is from that stamp set. Not fun. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside with my mountains. We'll come back to that. And I used early espresso for that. I wanted a nice dark color. All right, now for our little car... I have my white here, and we're going to stamp it in Lost Lagoon. So let's ink that up in Lost Lagoon. Make sure we have it nice and inky, and we're going to stamp that down. This is definitely one that you want to use the photopolymer or the stamp and pierce mat for. This is a very solid image, so you want to make sure that you get a nice, clean image. All right, so that's Lost Lagoon, and then there's this little detail piece that we're going to do in Pretty Peacock. So we're going to bring this back over. And this one just lines up with the bottom with the doors and the little sides there. Perfect. 
Isn't that cute? So fun. I just love it. All right. Now we're ready to die cut this piece. So let's get out. Move that stamp out of the way. Let's get out our die. So I already pulled my die out. This is going to go right on there. I'm going to grab a piece of post-it tape to hold this in place. And I want this to move around. So we're just going to line that up. Put some post-it tape on there. And let's grab our mini cut and emboss machine. And die cut this. You guys, this Sunday is October 1st. And it is also going to be the kickoff of my 12 weeks of Christmas. So I will be live in my VIP group every Sunday, starting this Sunday, um, for the next 12 Sundays. It's my new series, 12 weeks of Christmas. Now I do this every year. I think this is going to be the third or fourth year that I've done this, 12 weeks of Christmas. And it is always so much fun. And I have some really fun Christmas projects that I've been um making and planning on sharing with you guys. So check my VIP group. There's a link to join my VIP group in the video description. So you can head over there um, to check out my 12 weeks of Christmas starting on Sunday. All right. So we have our little tram. Let's go ahead and attach our little mechanism to our, to our tram. So on the, the top up here, I'm just going to add a little line of glue using my liquid glue. And we're just going to glue that on. All right, now speaking of my VIP group, make sure that you click that link in the video description and join my VIP group. It is for everybody. There is no requirements to join. Um, and because I will be doing all of my Wednesday Facebook Lives over in my VIP group starting next week. Um, this has really been a move that I needed to make for a while between the Facebook algorithms. Um, I get better um, reach in my VIP group. And so I want to make sure that I am reaching the most people that I can. And I do that in my VIP group. This is going to look gorgeous. It's not going to look beautiful. Um, so if you haven't yet already joined my VIP group, make sure you do. Um, my Wednesday Facebook lives from here out starting next week will be in my VIP group. I will still be posting here in my on my business page, but not as often. At most things will be posted in my VIP group. So if you don't want to miss out on sales, if you don't want to miss out on projects, if you don't want to miss out on lives, make sure that you join my VIP group. Okay. So this is the, in the stamp set, this is the, the line that the little tram follows on this, like those wires that the tram, um, or the little skyline or whatever it's called follows. So I'm going to ink this up in memento black, and we are just going to stamp this at a little bit of an angle onto our ink blended background. Now that everything is mostly dry, we'll be able to get a nice image for our, for our line there. Isn't that cool? All right. Let's close that up. And we are ready to start assembling this. Okay, so for our pool party piece, I did tell you we had that right. <laughs> okay. For our pool party piece, I wanted to put this behind our little tram so that um, you saw like the little glare of the window. So we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to use some little mini dimensionals. I should have grabbed those. Do I have any? Yeah. So I'm going to just put some little mini dimensionals right around the windows here. And we're going to attach this pool party piece and then we'll trim off any excess on it. So just a few little mini dimensionals around the, the windows and then peel off the the backings. I know this is the hardest part, those little mini dimensionals. All right. And then we're just going to stick this on. Now this is just a scrap. I'm not even sure how big it is, like one and a quarter. So just make sure it's, it's big enough to cover those windows. And we'll just stick this on just like that. And then just use your scissors and just cut around it. We'll just trim off those, those sides there. And this will give us a nice little um, kind of shadow from the inside or, you know, looks like the windows are our pool party. Um, all right. I'm looking for my Wink of Stella. Here it is. All right. Now I'm just going to cut color inside those windows, the Wink of Stella. Um, that's just going to add even more sparkle and shine to this card. But it's also going to give it that like windowy look. It's going to give it like that frosted windowy look. This is... What in my mind, this is like a winter sunset. You're taking the 
tram to the top of the mountain. Maybe you're going to ski or just have dinner up there. So, all right. So we are all set with our little, our little cart. Isn't that cute? It is so cute. All right, let's set it onto our card. Um, you know, what? let's set this onto our, let's glue this onto our piece first. I'm just going to grab some stamp and seal and we are going to adhere this down. I'm going to put a lot on here because the paper is just slightly warped from all that ink. And this is just going to have the slightest little border because it's only an eighth of an inch bigger. And all of the measurements are in the video description so you can check those out. All right, this is going to go onto our card. So let's bring in our card base. Okay. Now for my mountains, I started with a crumb cake piece that was two inches high by three and three quarters. And that way it's gonna fit perfectly onto our little ink blend background. So we're gonna add these with dimensionals. So I'm gonna add the bigger one in the back. I cut two. We stamped on the smaller one, so I'm gonna add the bigger one in the back. And make sure you add your mountains before you add your little, your little tram car because you don't want the tram car running into the mountain. You want to make sure the tram car is high enough. All right, so I'm going to just add this one with adhesive. It's just some adhesive across there. If you wanted to give some more dimension between the, the two mountains here, you could um, ink blend some crumb cake along the edges of those. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. All right, now for our, for our little tram car, I'm going to put a couple of little mini dimensionals on the bottom down here, right below the pool party piece. Cause that pool party piece has already popped up on dimensionals. And then I'm gonna put some adhesive there. And then I am just gonna use my scissors and just cut a tiny little sliver off the edge of the dimensionals. And we're just gonna use this one, peel off the backing on that. I'm just gonna stick that right along the top up here. And that's just gonna make sure that it doesn't wiggle around or move. So peel off your dimensional backings and then just make sure that you line up that piece with the wires and make sure your little tram is not running into the mountain. <laughs> there we go. And that completes our card. There are no ribbons or embellishments on here. There's so much sparkle from that Wink Estella that I didn't think it needed it. So let me bring in the other one so you can see the, the different shades that you got here. So this one is much darker. Maybe this is going up. This one's coming down. <laughs> I don't know. It is um, pretty stunning though. I think I might actually like the darker one better. I think the contrast is is really good on, with the little um, tram car. But I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, please let me know in the comments. Do you like the, the lighter one or the darker one better? They're both so gorgeous. And like I said, you're never going to get the same look twice when you ink blend. And I use the same exact colors for both of these. So... But um, I sure love this card. Now, um, I do have two more cards to share using this bundle. Let me bring these in. So this is the bundle. Um, so I have this one, which is very similar. So I used the same kind of layout on this one. Instead of stamping the tram card, though, I used the dies. So there are this little detail die, so you can die cut the die and then there's a detail die you can add on top of it so I use those and I cut them out of our soft shimmer paper the little um you know runner part whatever this is I cut that out of silver foil so it looks more like metal and then I just ink blended with balmy blue and misty moonlight I think so this one is a very different look then this one, my mountain, is pecan pie on this one, too. But it is pretty, it's the same layout. I pretty much just cased myself. I used a different greeting here, too, um, that will be listed in the blog post. This is going up tomorrow on my blog. And different colors on this one, too, but very, very cute. And then this one, I used this stamp, that long, um, the wire stamp here. I used this one, and I stamped it repeatedly and made this really fun background. So I stamped it um, going horizontally and vertically in Azure Afternoon, and I stamped it vertically in Lemon Lime Twist and horizontally in Lemon Lolly, and I made this really fun plaid background. If you're going to do this one, I do recommend using some grid paper to make sure that you get all of those lines nice and straight. That's what I did. I just made sure to line everything up on either side with on my grid paper. And then I just added some stamped pumpkins and some a die cut greeting from our alphabet Alamo die. So 
This is made just with this one stamp right here in the stamp set. So really, really fun projects using this one. Both of these will be on my blog later this week. This one Thursday, this one Friday. Um, this one will be on my blog in probably about 30 minutes. So give me a few minutes to get that uploaded and um, I will have that up. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. If you um, like this project, please share it on Facebook um, and like my channel and subscribe to my channel if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, remember, this host code is only good through Saturday night. Um, Sunday morning, I will have a brand new host code for October. And remember to join me in my VIP group. There's a link in the video description for October 1st. I will be live um, for my kickoff of my 12 weeks of Christmas series. Thank you guys again. I can't wait to talk to you guys again on Sunday, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.